Saturday where I take a scratch program uh, and build it and then explain how I make it. Uh, this week we're looking at the Pentatonic Chimes Level 2. Uh, level 1 was made two weeks ago where I did a very simple keyboard uh, where you simply basically clicked one of the chimes and it played the note. Each note corresponds to a number uh, and you play that number. Uh, or you could press the letter name and it would also uh, do exactly the same thing, would play that thing. Very, very simple, took very little code. Um, what we're going to do this week though is the computer is going to ask you to um, type in a list of notes uh, to, to play, press enter, and then it will play them. Now that seems very simple, um, and we'll show you how that can be very simple. So if I went C E G E C um, and press a tick, it plays them quite nicely. But what if I wasn't a very uh, well behaved user and I tried to type in loads of different uh, letters that weren't actually there? So, for example, if I typed in on shaw.net, well, we can see quite clearly A is there, that's fair enough. N isn't, S isn't, E is there, all right. O isn't, the dot isn't, the N isn't, the E is, and the T isn't. How is it going to be able to uh, figure that one out? So I press tick, and lo and behold, it just plays the A, the E, and the E. So how did I get to do that? And that's what we're going to look at in our programming. Uh, you'll see here we've got the three variables just for um, uh, uh, just for your viewing. Count the user notes and notes to sing. So we'll have a look and see what they look like inside. Right, we're uh, inside our programming language and uh, basically we're, uh, we have the stage here is set. Um, I have my chimes. The chimes codes actually stayed the same. Um, all the coding is going to go on the stage. So basically when um, I, I've kept the same code from last time because I'll be using it again. Uh, so when C is pre uh, uh, the C key is pressed, it'll play the middle C or if you click on it, it'll play just like that. Um, so that's uh, the same, but the stage is where all the action's happening, and it's when you click on the flag, it's really what it's really what happens. And there's a quite a lot of code. I'm just scrolling down here, so you can see how much code is here, and it looks fairly complicated. And in fairness, some of it is, uh, but we'll try and figure it out from there. And I've added some comments for those of you who are. Uh, uh, following along with this uh, using the Scratch program. If you want to see the uh, program itself, um, it's linked there in the description. Um, when you start off, um, basically what we need to know is our um, variables that we're using. We've got um, count, which is basically a counter. That's going to go from zero or one up to a certain number, and we'll talk about that in a while. We've got user notes, which is what the, u what, what the user types in uh, initially. So when you ask them, please um, type in the notes that you want to play, that's where that's stored, user notes. And that's, in, uh, that's, that's something to take uh, note of. And then what we're doing is we're actually uh, creating another um, variable, which is actually an array or a list, as Scratch calls them, called notes sing. These are the actual notes that we're going to play. So what the user types in may not necessarily be what the what the what the computer is going to play, because what the user types in may not be C, D, E, G, or A. So notes to sing are actually is going to be the bit where uh, are going to be the notes that are going to be sung. So we'll look at the uh, code in step by step. Um, and basically, the first step really is uh, what I'm going to highlight here. Just see with my mouse this part here the first part is we're going to set the counter to zero that's very important because uh, we initially have to set these things up and what we're going to do is uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're also going to clear anything that is in notes to sing because when we start the program all those things could be there so for example so at the moment uh, as you can see we've got three notes in notes to sing and we want to clear them if I press the green flag basically that will delete each one of those um, when you delete one what happens to what happens basically is it starts at number one and it deletes that 69 and number 64 then becomes number one so each time you're deleting the first item of notes testing uh, notes to sing you can change that to delete the last one or delete all of them uh, which is probably uh, which probably be quicker in coding actually come to think of it but anyway I like loops and um, so that's uh, basically what we're doing there um, next we're going to ask um, using the uh, sensing uh, block there, type the notes you'd like to play and we just wait for the answer and we set the user notes to whatever answer they're going to do. So basically user notes gets the um, gets whatever the user types in. So that's easy, that's the easy bit. We're just setting things up. And next is where things go a little bit more difficult. We move on and um, what we want to do is we want to move those user notes into be individual sounds within this array. So each um, each letter 
that if the, the users typed in is going to become part of a list of letters. So let's say I type in A, B, C, D. In notes it's saying number one will be A, number two will be B, number three will be C, and number four will be D. So what we're doing there is we'll repeat until where well, we have our counter at zero until the count uh, gets the length of user notes. So let's say I did A, B, C, D, so that's four. So until count gets to four, what we do is we uh, start our number one, so we add one to count, so we're at number one, and we add that letter of user notes, the first one, which is A, to notes to sing. So that becomes A, and then it goes, but then we move on, and because uh, count is equal to one, it's not equal to four, we keep going, we go up to number two, so it becomes B, C, D, and then it exits the loop. So that's basically all we're doing. We're doing nothing else other than changing this string which is just a, a, a load of letters into a list uh, which we can um, easily manipulate later on. Next we move on to the next part because we're actually going to have to start getting rid of those excess letters. So let's, um, let's for argument's sake, uh, look at um, onsha as our, um, as our string. So get, lose the dot net and let's go with onsha. And uh, I just want to I'll do that. So like what we'll do is do onsha and press tick. And basically what it's going to leave us with is two notes, which are A and E. So how does it get to that point? We want to delete the excess letters. So number one is going to be A, number two is going to be N, and number three is S, four is E, and five is O. So let's, using that, go from that. So we're going to set the counter to number one, which would be list number one, which is the A. And what we're going to do is repeat until the count, again, gets to the length of this array. So we, again, in this case, it's going to be five, okay? So what we do is we have an if, uh, if this thing here is true, uh, we're, going to, um, we're going to move up uh, to the next letter, and if not, we're just going to delete that letter. So that's basically the plan uh, uh, of action. So what this is, and you won't be able to see all of it, but you, uh, without dragging, and dra dragging it all out, uh, if the first item of notes to sing is a C, or if the first item is D, and it moves on to E, R, G, or A, and so on. Um, if it's any of those things, if it's either C, D, E, G, or A, then what you do is really nothing, and you move up a letter. So your position one, A, yes, it is. We're just going to move up to the, uh, up one, and we uh, go back to the loop. So then we become number two. So we're up to number two. So if item number two, so item number two is N for Ansha in Ansha. If N is going to be C, D, E, uh, G, or A then we uh, change it up, but it isn't, n isn't one of those numbers, so it goes here, we delete, so basically we just delete n. That's simply it. So we're either keeping it or we're deleting it. And when we delete it, we don't move up one because what happens is the rest of the letters move back, so we stay on number two uh, because when n is gone, s then replaces it as number two, e becomes number three, and o becomes number four, and actually the length of notes is to sing changes to four then as well and it goes on through the loop so you just can do that yourself um, manually just seeing how that works um, once it's done that it will have reduced everything down to the a and the e so you'll have um, a new um, variable length of notes to sing we'll now just have two things and this will be a and this will be e so the third thing is then we need to change those letters into notes that um, scratch understands and as I was saying middle C uh, basically is, um, is is number 60 D is 62 E is 64 G is 67 and A is 69 they're just the notes that are played so what we need to do if you said play C using the sound tool um, here's sound so it's saying play the note so 60 is what they use if I put in a C there it wouldn't understand it you actually have to put the number so what we have to do is convert those um, so what we have is we have an A and an E. So we go, we have a counter at one. So if the counter is greater than the length of the, the notes to sing, which is two, because we've just got A and E. Uh, so at the moment it's one, so it's not greater than two. Um, we go to, if it's a C, change it to a 60. It's an A, so no. If it's a D, then change it to 60. No, 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 no. And basically by the end, it has to be 69. So number one turns to 69. Then it moves, it changes up to one. We go around again and we say, uh, is 2 greater than 2? It isn't. So we go in um, and we can then choose the letter E. So we convert uh, the letter into uh, 64, which it does. Once it does that, we set the counter back to 0 
and what we're going to do is we're actually going to play the notes and what we do really is very simply we have um, repeat until the count is greater than two so again it starts at zero and we play the note and we just basically play 69 and 64 for one beat and we change the count by one each time so basically what we do again is we play item uh, item one of notes to sing which is 69 for one beat so we play 69 for one beat then we move up one and we play item two which is 64 we play 64 for one beat and we change the count and then it stops and you basically get to play it that's basically it um, I know it's quite it seems quite long but when you break it up into the little pieces um, of code it, uh, it's just a step-by-step -step, uh, very long piece of, uh, of puzzle but um, I hope I've broken it down easily enough for you. Um, in the next uh, uh, level, which is level three, we're going to join up level one and level two and try and um, make the, um, every time it, it plays a, a tune, it actually changes the look of, of these key keys. So uh, basically whenever it plays these two notes, these two notes look like they're being played on a piano as if they're being pressed down. So that'll be level three. And I hope you'll come back in a couple of weeks to I see that in action. That's all for me. A bit of a longer video than normal, um, uh, but there was lots in it. I hope that you uh, have learned about parsing um, strings and um, and maybe a little bit on uh, how Scratch reads musical uh, music as well. Um, thanks very much for listening, and we'll see.